Welcome to Over the Hill Outdoors. Have you ever been in a situation where you needed to know direction but you had no compass or GPS? Well, no problem. There are some old-timer pathfinder techniques that, that estimate direction with surprising accuracy. In this video, I'll review a couple of them. On my most recent winter walkabout, while spending three days out on a big frozen lake, I put into practice a couple of those old navigation techniques that I learned as a young Boy Scout and, and have used from time to time over the many years since. And, and I was pleased to see that, number one, I still remembered them, and number two, they still work and, and are relatively accurate. So in this video, I'll review a couple of those techniques that involve the sun and then in a companion video I'll go over some electronics free methods for navigating at night. I realize that these are old hat to most people of at least of my generation who have spent much of their lives either hunting or fishing or hiking or camping in the outdoors and for you this is just a, a refresher but but perhaps there are some younger outdoorsmen and outdoors women who haven't yet made this basic knowledge a part of their skill set. Uh, to you, I'd say this is important stuff that could even save your life one day. The first technique that I'll demonstrate is, is uh, what I call my sun tracking method. Uh, I'll demonstrate first with a graphic representation of the steps involved and then I'll show the technique being used uh, a couple of times in the field. You begin by placing a stick vertically in the ground and marking the top end of its shadow. Then after waiting, oh, at least 20 or 30 minutes, you mark the, uh, the top end of the stick's shadow again, and then you draw a line between those two points. That line runs east and west, and the end nearest the, the second mark points east. And then from there you just add a perpendicular line, and that line runs north-south, and uh, there you go. So, just how accurate is this method? In my experience, it's typically within 10 or so degrees of what my compass will show. And that's about the same as the difference between uh, true north and magnetic north in, in my part of the world. So in this demonstration I'll end by comparing the results against that of my compass set to indicate true north. And you'll see that my sun tracking north line is, is not very different from the true north line that's determined by the compass. The second technique uses time of day to determine direction. And again, I'll, I'll demonstrate it first with a, a couple of graphic representations, and then I'll show the technique used in the field. The first step is to hold the watch horizontal and, and rotate it so the hour hand points toward the sun. Now, without turning the watch, Imagine a line running from the center of the watch face through the 12 o'clock position. Estimate the midpoint now between the 12 and the hour hand. And then imagine a line running from the watch center through the, the angle midpoint. That line indicates approximate south. The opposite direction is north and the line running perpendicular points east and west. 
AM or PM makes no difference. Here's an example from late afternoon. Once again, you rotate the watch so the hour hand points at the sun. Then you imagine a line running through the 12. Next, you estimate the midpoint between the hour hand and the 12. And then you imagine a line running from the watch center through that midpoint. And that line is pointing approximately south. If you have a digital rather than a conventional dial watch, the technique still works but you just have to draw the watch dial in the dirt or the snow instead. I start by placing a stick vertically in the ground and marking the end of its shadow. Then I draw a circle around that end point to represent the face of a large watch. Sometimes I, I start by drawing the circle first and then adding the center point then I, I place the vertical stick on the edge of the circle so that its shadow points to or passes through the center point. Either way works fine. Now I draw in the hour hand by, by tracing the stick's shadow. Next I make 12 evenly spaced marks around the edge of the circle representing the, the 12 numerals on, on the face of a conventional watch dial. Based on the time indicated on your digital watch, now fill in the numerals. Draw a line now from the center point to the 12, and draw another line exactly midway between the 12 and the hour hand. That line points approximately south. Now you draw a perpendicular line and add the other three principal directions and you have your compass. Alright, I'll finish with an unnarrated clip from my All Ice Walkabout showing this last technique from start to finish. If the sun is too dim to cast a shadow but, but it's still visible, there is a way still to establish directions and I call it the gun sight method. Instead of using the sun's shadow to mark its location or its movement, you use a stick like the front sight of a gun aimed at the sun. It, it's easiest maybe to explain with another animated representation. You begin by placing a stick vertically in the ground just as you would for the shadow methods. Then with your eye as close to the ground as possible, align the top of the stick with the sun and make a mark on the ground directly below your eye and then put a small stick in its place to make the mark more obvious. If using the watch method, then you would just draw a line between that point and the base of your sighting stick to be your hour hand. Then you would proceed as per previous instructions just to draw a circle, fill in the numerals, uh, make a line between the 12 and the hour hand and, and that line is south. However, if you're doing the sun tracking method, you'll have to 
get a second point now. So you wait 15 to 20 minutes after placing that first uh, small stick and then you repeat the sighting process in getting that eye as close to the ground as possible, aligning the top of your sighting stick with the sun, and then putting a mark in the soil or the snow directly beneath your eye. And then add a small stick to make this, this mark or this point number two a little bit easier to see. Last step is to draw your east-west line through the two points just as before, and there you have it just as good as if you had been using the shadow. So, two quick and easy ways to estimate the cardinal compass directions. These methods are, are not as accurate as a GPS or a compass, obviously, but they, they do much better than most people might expect. I hope that you'll watch my other two videos on old-time overland navigation techniques. One is on establishing um, uh, directions at night using the stars and the moon and the other is on estimating distance traveled. Until next time, enjoy the outdoors, keep improving those pathfinder skills, and be safe always.